Hello, I'm James Greenberg. Today we focus on that shining testament to liberty, a cat's Bill of Rights. You'll find it at the homepage of a group called All for Animals. I find it inspiring. Let's compare and contrast. The original Bill of Rights was composed by our young nation's most distinguished thinkers and statesmen. The Cat's Bill of Rights was drafted by a collection of middle-aged spinsters and male opera buffs. Is this an entirely unfounded characterization based on cheap stereotypes? Yes. But let's not cloud the issue. Now that people and cats each have a Bill of Rights, it's helpful to compare the two constituencies. Humans with our vastly superior intellects would seem to have the upper hand. Then again, cats have powers of concentration and vision we can't hope to match, though James Madison could stare at a fly for hours on end. Now let's go to the landmark Sixth Amendment, granting cats the right to be treated as equal members of the animal kingdom. Scholars agree that what the framers really mean here is equal to dogs. It's a problematic assertion, as a simple constitutional test will show. Ask Tabby to sit, or fetch or do anything besides sit there with a look of effete superiority on her irritating little cat face. I think you'll see what I mean. Finally, the Cat's Bill of Rights grants cats the right to be represented accurately by those who speak on their behalf. Now the key word here is accurately, and it may have far-reaching implications. Because from now on, phrases like, my pussy feels great today, this pussy's starving for some lovin', or man oh man, that is one hot pussy, will be permissible only if factually correct. Food for thought. I'm James Greenberg. Thanks for coming deep inside the Bills of Rights.